Hello and welcome to Clean Cut Sports coverage of Speedway in the Second City. Tonight at a rather damp Perry Bar Stadium in Birmingham on this Wednesday night for City Gear Boxes National League action between the Birmingham Sure Stop Brummies and the Eastbourne IT First Eagles. These two, two of the top sides in the National League this year. Birmingham needing two more wins to be assured of the title and they'll be going all out to attack the men from Sussex here at Perry Bar this evening. Let's take a look at the two lineups then. We'll start with the Brummies. It's Adam Ellis at one. Number two is Adam Kirby. Three, Sam Chapman. Four, Zach Weichnacht. Number five, the skipper Tom Perry. At six is Jack Smith. And number seven, Cradley's Tyler Govier in as a guest. Their team manager is Graham Drury. For the Eagles, number one is Bradley Wilson-Dean. Number two, Richard Andrews. Three, the skipper Mark Owen. Four is Ben Hopwood. At five, it's rider replacement for Georgie Wood. He's absent due to work commitments. Six is Kelsey Dugard. And number seven, Daniel Spiller. Their team manager is Glenn Martin. And the referee is Chris Derno. Wet condition. That's been, it's been uh, raining on and off throughout the day here in Birmingham. But the match does go ahead. This is a crucial one for the Brummies. And we're ready for 15 heats of Speedway. Birmingham versus Eastbourne. So the riders coming up to tape centre for heat number one, sponsored by Mike Lawrence. Eastbourne have won the toss. They take uh, gates positions two and four. So it's Adam Kirby off gate one in blue for Birmingham. Gate two in yellow is Richard Andrews. Gate three in red, we have Adam Ellis. And gate four in white will be Bradley Wilson-Dean, the hot prospect from New Zealand. Maybe a Premier League berth is in the offering for him next season. He partners Richard Andrews, been around the National League for a few years now. Missed a chunk of this season with a hand injury. And Birmingham represented by the two Adams. Number one, Adam Ellis, the winner of the Cradley Golden Hammer here a few weeks ago. A meeting also available from Clean Cut Sports. And Adam Kirby back in the main body of the side goes off the inside in blue. You can see how wet it is. It's going to be very, very tricky for the first few heats here at Perry Bar. The riders will make the best of it, though. Birmingham need two more wins to win the title. Here we go with Heat 1. Kirby, Andrews, Ellis and Wilson-Dean. Away we go. Adam Ellis makes his trademark flying start from gate three. Leads into the first turn. Brad Wilson-Dean goes out wide, but the red lights have come on. Referee Chris Derno not happy there, and that will be a rerun with all four riders. So let's try again then with heat number one, sponsored by Mike Lawrence. Gate one in blue, it's Adam Kirby. Richard Andrews, gate two in yellow. Adam Ellis, gate three in red. And Bradley Wilson-Dean from gate four in white. Don't forget Birmingham need just two more wins to be confirmed as National League champions. Let's try again with heat one. Kirby, Andrews, Ellis and Wilson-Dean. Away we go. A better start by Brad Wilson-Dean, the New Zealander from the outside. But it is Adam Ellis who leads into the first turn. Wilson-Dean giving chase, trying to get round the inside. And he goes through into the lead down the back straights. So Brad Wilson-Dean it is, the New Zealand under-21 champion who leads the way. Rare to see Adam Ellis in second place here at Perry Bar. Problems in third place for Richard Andrews. He slows up a little. Adam Kirby trying to catch him. Two races in one here. It's advantage Eastbourne at the moment, but Adam Ellis is attacking as they come into turn four, trying to go round the outside. You can see how near impossible the conditions are. Hopefully things will dry up as the meeting goes on. Ellis having a look on the outside. Tries again as they go down the back straight. Can he outdrag Brad Wilson-Dean here into turn three? The master of Perry Bar goes to the outside. He's out in the ruts on that wider line. Into the last lap. He's straight round the outside. He's trying to take the lead away as they go into the final lap. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Adam Ellis takes the lead for Birmingham down the back straights. It's not often we see Adam Ellis beaten, especially in opening heats here at Perry Bar. And he's going to take the win in heat one. Ellis wins it. Wilson Dean in second. Third place is Richard Andrews in yellow. Adam Kirby at the back in blue. So what was looking like a 4-2 for three laps to the visitors ends up as a three-all in heat one, sponsored by Mike Lawrence. And it's a win for Birmingham number one, Adam Ellis in heats number one. Brilliant move around the outside of Brad Wilson-Dean. It's Birmingham three, Eastbourne three. Riders coming up to tapes then for heat number two, sponsored by Debrett's Jewellery. And off gate one for Eastbourne in white is Kelsey Dugard. Gate two in red for Birmingham, it's Jack Smith. Gate three in yellow, Eastbourne's possible secret weapon here, Daniel Spiller. And gate four in blue, Cradley's Tyler Govia, guests in place of Alex Wilson in the Birmingham lineup. Jack Smith, the son of former British champion Andy Smith, in, in place of Harvey Banks, partners him. But the man to watch here could well be Daniel Spiller 
the German-based Englishman. He's been pulling in some very big scores for Eastbourne in recent times. So it's Dugard, Smith, Spiller and Govia. They get underway and it's Eastbourne who make the start. Kelsey Dugard, believed to be the first fourth generation speedway rider who leads the way. Daniel Spiller, though, up there on his outside. It's Eastbourne who lead the way. Jack Smith leading the Birmingham attack in third place. But it's the man in white, Kelsey Dugard, the son of uh, former British Grand Prix winner Martin Dugard. His granddad and great granddad have also ridden for the Eagles. You may as well rename the club the Dugard Eagles, some might say. They've been linked with the uh, club since it was founded. Second place in yellow, Daniel Spinner, winner of many uh, 250cc titles in his uh, younger days. He's uh, run wide there. I think his bike has let him down. And uh, Jack Smith has gone up into second place. So Spiller struggling a bit here. And he could lose third place to Tyler Govia, the other Birmingham guest at reserve. Dugard still leads the way in white. Jack Smith up there in second place, the Birmingham guest in red. And then for third place, Dan Spiller has got going again up in third. We seem to have lost the rider in blue on the last lap. Whoa, Dugard nearly loses it out of the final term, but he does take the win. Red lights have come on because I think the rider in blue has come down on the outside of turn one. He has remounted, but the red lights had come on at Tyler Govier. There he is, took a spill on the start of the final lap. So that was a win for Kelsey Dugard in white. Jack Smith in second in red after Daniel Spiller suffered a problem mid-race. He took third. That's a 4-2 in heat two, sponsored by DeBrett's Jewelry in favour of the visitors. They take the lead. Birmingham 5, Eastbourne 7. So Eastbourne lead as we go into heat number three in memory of Bill and Beryl Wilkins. Gate one for Birmingham in blue is Zach Weichnecht. Alongside him, the Eastbourne skipper in white, Mark Owen. Gate three in red, it's Sam Chapman. And gate four in yellow, Ben Hopwood, the man signed by Eastbourne from Buxton earlier in the campaign to replace the injured David Mason. He partners Mark Owen, the former British under-15 rider, off gate two in white, taking on Sam Chapman and Birmingham star Zach Weichnecht. He should be the favourite here on paper. Weichnecht, Owen, Chapman and Hopwood is the lineup. Good start by Ben Hopwood from the outside. Goes level with Zach Weichnecht into the first turn. Weichnecht leads the way. Hopwood on the attack, the former Buxton man around the outside. Mark Owen in third place in white at the back in red. Sam Chapman down in white goes uh, Mark Owen at turn three. Tries to pick his bike up and uh, gets going again. She does so. Meantime, up front is still Zach Weichnecht ahead of the man in yellow. Ben Hopwood in second place. Weichnecht leads the way. Former holder of the golden helmet, the bronze helmet, excuse me, I should say. Lost that to Cradley's Max Clegg a couple of meetings ago when he fell in the uh, deciding race. Second place in yellow and black is Hopwood, but it's Zach Weichnecht in the clear. Sam Chapman is further back in third. The scores will be level if it stays like this. Sam Chapman keeping it going. He's well behind, struggling with the boggy conditions after the rain showers today. Down the back straight they go then for the final time. It's going to be a win for Zach Weichnecht in blue, starting as he means to go on. Second in yellow, we have Ben Hopwood. Third in red, it is Sam Chapman. And Mark Owen will come through to finish fourth after remounting due following his fall. So the scores are tied after heat three, run in memory of Bill and Beryl Wilkins. Zach Weichnecht, it is who takes the win. Are we going to see a maximum for the Zach attack here tonight? at Perry Bar. Zach Weichnecht heads round in celebration. It's Birmingham 9, he's spawned 9. All square going into heat number four, sponsored by bravo14.co.uk. Tyler Govier goes off gate one for the Brummies in blue. Gate two for the Eagles in yellow, Daniel Spiller. Gate three in red, first appearance for the Brummies skipper, Tom Perry. And Kelsey Dugard takes the rider replacement ride off the outside in white for Georgie Wood, absent due to work commitments tonight. So Kelsey, the winner of heat two, comes in here off the outside in white, partnering his fellow reserve, Daniel Spiller. Struggled a bit in heat two, just learning the track, his first appearance at Perry Bar. Tom Perry will be the favourite for success against the three reserves in this one. So from the inside, Govier, Spiller, Perry and Dugard. And Tom Perry, not surprisingly, makes a decent start. The Eastbourne pair tried to crowd him going into the first turn. Whoops, two fallers on the uh, first turn. Well, not quite a fall there for Kelsey Dugard. Good save. And uh, it looks like Tyler Govier's got going again as well. 
So, good save by both of them there. Perry, in the meantime, is your leader ahead of Daniel Spiller, who's up to speed now, the former 250cc champion. Third, in white, we've got Kelsey Dugard after a nice J turn. I've never seen anybody do a J turn on a speedway bike before. He's in third place, and well behind in blue, having remounted, is Tyler Govia. So, it's a three all as it stands at the moment. And Daniel Spiller not just letting uh, Tom Perry get away, he's been pulling some very big scores in recent meetings for his new side, Eastbourne. Tom Perry's looking for him there as they start the final lap. Tom Perry might be wondering where his teammate Tyler Govey has gone as well. Spiller tracking Perry as they go down the back straights. He's going to have a look as they come into the final turn. I don't think he's going to do it. Dan uh, Daniel Spiller has to settle the second behind Tom Perry, who takes his first win of the night. Third is going to go to the rider in white, Kelsey Dugard. And at the back in blue, after remounting, will be uh, Tyler Govier. So a three-all from Heat 4, sponsored by bravo14.co.uk, keeps the scores level. Good speed that time shown by uh, Daniel Spiller, but it was a win for Tom Perry, starting as he means to go on. The Brummie skipper takes his first success of the evening. It's Birmingham 12, Eastbourne 12. Lining up for heat number five, sponsored by TCH Self Drive Hire. Sam Chapman's off gate one in red. Richard Andrews, gate two in yellow. Zach Weichnecht off gate three in blue. While Bradley Wilson Dean's off gate four in white. He was timed out under the two minutes and has to go off the 15 metre handicap. You can see him there on the left of your picture. 12 all the score. Chapman, Andrews, Weichnecht, and Wilson Dean from the handicap. Away they go. Great start by the. Brummies pairing, it'll be Zach Weignex who goes into the lead on the outside and Brad Wilson-Dean, the Eastbourne number one, left playing catch-up after being timed out under two minutes and he goes down, going into turn three, second Eastbourne rider to fall off there and a very angry Brad Wilson-Dean trying to get the bike off the track, I don't think he's going to do so, the race is going to have to be stopped. And that's a very angry looking Brad Wilson-Dean there. He, uh, I think he's on a borrowed machine as well after his problems that saw him disqualify, uh, penalised under the two minutes and now he's disqualified from the rerun completely. So preparing for the uh, second rerun of uh, Heat Number 5 sponsored by TCH Self Drive Hire. Now it should be Richard Andrews off gate one in yellow Sam Chapman gate two in red and Zach Weichnecht gate four in blue because with Brad Wilson Dean having been disqualified he doesn't have to go off the outside from the handicap anymore and so the riders can revert to their original gate position. Ah, they've realised now. The riders hadn't realised they were just sitting there looking confused as to why the race wasn't starting then. I've never seen that before. You'd think somebody would tell them, wouldn't you? Anyway, we're now ready, almost ready to go then. Richard Andrews, the lone Eastbourne Eagle taking on Sam Chapman and Zach Weichnecht looking for win at number two. Here we go then, Andrews, Chapman and Weichnecht get underway with heat number five, super start by Zach Weichnecht in clear space on the outside line and he leads the way. You can see how much the track has dried on the centre and outside lines. The inside is still very slippery though. It's Richard Andrews in second place as they complete the first lap. Sam Chapman in third but Zach Weichnecht pulling away at the front. You wouldn't know to watch him, it's his first season of League Speedway. There's Richard Andrews, been around the National League for a few years now with Newport and Weymouth, among others. The Devon-based rider in second place. And Sam Chapman further back in third, made his league debut last year with Scunthorpe. It's going to be a 4-2 if it stays like this, and Birmingham will take the lead for the first time. Don't forget a win tonight and a win at Mildon Hall at the weekend. We'll see the Shawstock Brummies crown league champions in their year of return to Speedway. Zach Weichnecht away and clear at the front and through in the second has gone Sam Chapman. Richard Andrews has uh, suffered a bike problem. It's going to be a Brummies 5-1 and a 5 nil if uh, Richard Andrews can't push his bike round. Weichnecht wins it. Second goes to Sam Chapman. Richard Andrews has suffered bike problems. He's on the back straight. There he is and he's going to try and push home for a point. He's got half a lap and it's quite a long track here at... Uh, Perry Bar. So Richard Andrews is doing all he can to keep the uh, Eastbourne uh, IT First Eagles in contention in tonight's meeting. He's trying to get the machine going again. He's scooting it along there. 
All right, let's see if he can do it then on the inside line. So he's got as little distance as possible to push. Coming round for a point. We've seen this a couple of times here at Perry Bar over the last couple of years. Here comes Richard Andrews, the Birmingham fans very sportingly applauding him. Here he comes, he's going to do it. The finish line and the chequered flag are in sight. There he is, Richard Andrews comes home for a third place point. Well done, Richard. Unlucky there to lose second place. So a 5-1 in Heat 5, and that means the Brummies are ahead. Birmingham 17, Eastbourne 30. On to heat number six then, sponsored by Birmingham Speedway Supporters Club. Adam Ellis is off gate one for Birmingham in red. Mark Owen is the rider replacement off gate two in white. Adam Kirby goes off gate three in blue. And Daniel Spiller comes in for Kelsey Dugard off the outside gate in yellow. 17-13 the score then. Birmingham looking to extend their lead. Ellis, Owen, Kirby and Spiller. Away we go with heat six. Lightning start as always from Adam Ellis. He'll lead the way into the first turn. The Eastbourne pair tuck in in second and third. Daniel Spiller, the reserve up into second place ahead of his skipper, Mark Owen. Adam Kirby at the back in blue. Well, no one can seemingly beat Adam Ellis in recent times here at Perry Bar. Bradley Wilson Dean tried his hardest in heat one, but Ellis is absolutely flying out in front. There's Mark Owen in third place in white. The Eagles skipper, it's his reserve. Daniel Spiller chasing after Adam Ellis. Daniel Spiller could be the next Zach Veit next summer, predicting the way he's learning the sport, pulling in big scores everywhere in his first few National League meetings. He's got no answer to the pace of the Brummies. Number one, Adam Ellis. Oh, he's lost it there, coming out of turn two, and he's down. Adam Ellis goes down. He's trying to remount. He's got going again, and the red, but the red lights had come on now. I suspect that one's going to... No, I don't know what's going to happen there, because... Adam Ellis had remounted by the time that the red lights came on. The Eastbourne riders and Adam Kirby managed to miss him. Now I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to hear what the official announcement is after that one. Right, the race has been awarded. I can tell you, Daniel Spiller, the winner, ahead of Mark Owen. Adam Kirby in third, and Adam Ellis disqualified as the cause of the stoppage when he did manage to get the bike up again and uh, got going just as the red lights came on. So the Birmingham fans, and in particular Adam Ellis, won't be too happy with that one because a 5-1 to Eastbourne means the scores are level after six heats. Birmingham 18, Eastbourne 18. Well, plenty of twists and turns, to say the least, so far in this National League encounter. Heat number seven is next, sponsored by Concept Blinds. Let's see if what this one will bring. Mark Owens out again off gate one in white. Tom Perry, gate two in red. Gate three in yellow, we've got Ben Hopwood. And gate four in blue, it is Jack Smith, the uh, Brummies reserve guest in place of Harvey Banks. Tom Perry will start as the favourite here, going for two wins out of two. Let's see if he can do it. Owen off one, then Perry, Hopwood and Smith. Away we go. Fairly close out of the start. Looks like Eastbourne have just got the advantage into the first turn, but down on the outside goes Jack Smith in blue. Just slides off as so many already have. He's going to try and get going again. He does so. Meantime, it's the man in yellow, Ben Hopwood, who leads coming out of turn four. Tom Perry around the outside of Mark Owen up into second place as they exited turn four sticking to his favoured outside line here Tom Perry now going after Ben Hopwood at the front of the field the man who replaced David Mason in the Eastbourne lineup a few weeks ago Perry reeling him in it's an intelligent ride from the former Wolverhampton and Leicester man at elite league level down the back straight they go Jack Smith half a lap behind in fourth place still going Tom Perry Loves riding as wide as he can. Normally see it later in the meeting though. Oh, Tom Perry's got problems, he's slowing down. I'm not sure what's happened there, that the riders in red and white have both stopped. Did they think they'd seen the chequered flag there? Well, I, d I don't know what's happened there. Well, they've now started back up again. What on earth is going on? I, I don't know what's happened there. 
I think the start marshals put the chequered flag out a lap too early. Well, for the second race in a row, I'm left bewildered at what the heck's happened. This meeting's turning into a comedy of errors. Ben Hopwood thinks he's won, but I'm going to wait to see what's said from the, uh, from the officials. Right, well, uh, after those very strange scenes there at the end of heat number seven, sponsored by Concept Blinds, we have got a result. We believe the start marshal, for some reason, put the chequered flag out a lap too early, which caused the riders to slow, with the exception of Ben Hopwood. Ben did take the win ahead of Tom Perry, Mark Owen and Jack Smith. That result has been declared. So the score after seven heats, Birmingham 20, Eastbourne 22. This meeting turning into a comedy of errors, though. Well, what on earth else can happen in this meeting? Then we're only halfway through this as well. We're only up to heat eight, sponsored by Hart Recruitment. Daniel Spillers off gate one in yellow for Eastbourne. Tyler Govia gate two in blue. Gate three in white, we've got uh, Richard Andrews. And gate four in red, it's Adam Kirby. Richard Andrews presumably having got his breath back from pushing his bike half a lap of the Perry Bar circuit. Daniel Spiller, a winner last time out in heat six after Adam Ellis fell. Tyler Govey has yet to score, and Adam Kirby one point, and that was because Adam Ellis fell likewise two heats ago. So that's Spiller, Govia, Andrews, and Kirby. What's going to happen this time then? Well, Eastbourne make the start once again. Adam Kirby trying to get round the outside in red. Spiller and Andrews lead the way. Kirby goes too wide. He's hit the fence, and down he comes now, down the back straight. That's surely going to be a race stoppage. Adam Kirby, that's not the first time he's done that this season, and the red light is on for. Adam Kirby, he's disqualified for the rerun. Let's hope he's okay. That's the second big smash I think he's had coming out of turn two at Perry Bar this year. The bike going flying ahead of him. And let's hope that uh, Adam Kirby is okay. So three riders only for the rerun of heats number eight then. Daniel Spiller from gate one in yellow and black. Tyler Govia, the lone Brummie off gate two in blue. And Richard Andrews off gate three in white. Adam Kirby did walk back to the pits of it, battered and bruised. Hopefully he can continue later on. So Tyler Govia yet to score the uh, Cradley Heathens reserve in place of uh, Alex Wilson in the Birmingham lineup tonight. Let's see what he can do here. Spiller, Govia and Andrews is the lineup. And it is the Eastbourne pair who surge away into the lead from the start. They can get a second successive, or a third successive, sorry, heat advantage here. In second five, one in three races. And Eastbourne will lead by six points at the halfway point of the meeting. Richard Andrews it is who leads the way. Been around the National League for about uh, six or seven years now. Leads newcomer Daniel Spiller. Tyler Govia, who's uh, shown flashes of brilliance during his time with Cradley, of course, the... Uh, co-tenants with the Brummies here at Perry Bar this season, dropping away in third place. Now, is this running going to pass without incident? We've had more than our fair share of incidents and bizarre scenes tonight. Richard Andrews leads the way. He'll move on to five points. If he stays like this, Daniel Spiller loses it and crunch into the fence there. Coming out of turn four, rolls over the finish line. I certainly put the commentator's curse on that one, didn't I? Daniel Spiller's up and OK. Leaves his bike on the track there. Very lucky not to be collected by Tyler Govia. Now, I suspect referee Chris Derno is going to award this one as a 3-2. With the uh, light, yellow light is on for uh, Dan Spiller. He is disqualified. Just waiting to hear if the race will be awarded. Well, certainly a spectacular fall there for Daniel Spiller. The race has been awarded as a win for Richard Andrews ahead of Tyler Govia. Two finishes only in Heat 8, sponsored by Hart Recruitment. So Eastbourne get the heat advantage, not to the extent they would have wanted, though. It's now Birmingham 22, Eastbourne 25. So, on to heat number nine. What the heck's going to happen this time? The heat is sponsored by Sheila and Chris Bowen. Gate one in white, we have Richard Andrews. 
Gate two in blue, Zach Weitnecht, unbeaten so far. Gate three in yellow, good to see him back on the bike, Daniel Spiller. And gate four in red, it's Sam Chapman. So what's going to happen this time? Same lineup as the last race for Eastbourne. Richard Andrews, the winner of the last race. Daniel Spiller taking a spill, but uh, thankfully none the worse. Zach Weitnecht going for three out of three. Let's see if he can continue his unbeaten run. Andrews, Weitnecht, Spiller and Chapman. Away we go. Great start by the Brummies pairing. Zach Weitnecht will take the lead into the first turn. Sam Chapman round the outside into second place. This is more like it for the Brummies. Three points down. Going into this one, Richard Andrews giving chase, he's going too wide, coming out of turn four though, that's dropped him back. Try and chase down Sam Chapman for second place, Weitnecht's away and gone at the front, Chapman will try and hang on for second place then. It's all about the race for the minor placing in this one, here comes Andrews again, having a look in the deep slush on the outside. Daniel Spiller at the back in yellow, possibly still feeling the effects of that spill in the previous race. It's the men in red and white are the men to watch. Here comes Andrews having a look again. He's got to go to the outside. He's dropped it going into turn three. Down goes Richard Andrews. Meantime, Zach Weitnecht has already taken the last lap flag ahead of uh, Sam Chapman. It's going to be a Brummies 5-1. The rider in white has got his bike onto the centre. Here comes Zach Weitnecht through to take, make it three wins out of three. Second in red is going to go to Sam Chapman to the cheers of the Brummies fans. Daniel Spiller comes over in third. Birmingham take their second 5-1 of the night and they are back in the lead after Heat 9, sponsored by Sheila and Chris Bowen. So Zach Weichneck to weigh and clear all the way, unaware of the dramas behind him with Richard Andrews falling while chasing Sam Chapman. Zach heads round in celebration along with his teammate Sam Chapman and the home side are back in the lead. It's Birmingham 27, Eastbourne 26. So can the Brummies build on their lead in Heat 10, sponsored by Amcop. Ben Hopwood's off Gate 1 for Eastbourne in yellow. Gate 2 in blue, good to see him back out. Adam Kirby for the Brummies. Gate 3 in white, it is Mark Owen. And off Gate 4 in red, Adam Ellis looking to get back to winning ways here after his fall last time out. A very rare spill in Heat number 6 for the Brummies number 1. Just overcooked it on turn 2. Nearly got going again, but the red lights just beat him to it. So, the two Adams out here in this heat number 10. What can they do? Hopwood, Kirby, Owen and Ellis is the lineup. Adam Ellis moves across there aggressively on Mark Owen on the run to the first turn and takes the lead. Adam Kirby is boxed in on the uh, slippier inside line. And now Eastbourne will team ride for second place. Adam Ellis away and clear at the front then as they complete the first lap. It's Owen in second place. Then Hopwood in third. Adam Kirby, possibly feeling the effects of that crash in Heat 8, is at the back. So Birmingham will still lead by a single point if it stays like this. They need to pull away. They need to dig deep after those problems earlier on. Adam Ellis away and clear once again, avoiding the ruts there, coming out of turn two, riding a slightly tighter line. Mark Owen, the Eastbourne skipper, chasing in second place. Yet to record a win tonight. Eastbourne's only race winners, in fact, have been Daniel Spiller, Ben Hopwood and Richard Andrews. Adam Kirby dropping back in blue, but there is Adam Ellis lifting the front wheel down the back straight for the final time. He comes through to take his second win of the evening. Ellis wins it in red. Second place in white goes to Marco in third. Ben Hopwood, Adam Kirby at the back in blue. Birmingham still lead by a point following Heat 10, sponsored by Amcomp. Adam Ellis already celebrating like Birmingham have won the league. They're not quite there yet, Adam. They still need a few more league points yet. Ellis heads round in celebration. It's Birmingham 30, Eastbourne 29. Five heats to go here at Perry Bar, just one point in it, 30-29 as we go into heat number 11 in memory of Victor Walters. Tom Perry, the skipper, is off gate one in red. Gate two in white, Brad Wilson-Dean for Eastbourne. Gate three in blue, we have Jack Smith, and gate four in yellow, it is Richard Andrews, a faller last time out. He's on five and a bonus. Brad Wilson-Dean, only two points, crashed out of his last ride back in heat five. 
Tom Perry's on five points, beaten by Ben Hopwood earlier on, while Jack Smith is on two points. 30-29 then. Birmingham need a couple more heat advantages. Let's see what they can do here. Perry, Wilson Dean, Smith and Andrews get underway. Brad Wilson Dean clamps down on Tom Perry on the run to the first turn. It's Eastbourne that lead the way. Richard Andrews has gone into second place. Now, what can Tom Perry do? He needs to go onto his favoured outside line here to attack Richard Andrews for second place. He's going for it as they come off turn four and he's going to go past both of them down the home straight. What a superb piece of riding by Tom Perry. There's not many riders who can do that here at Perry Bar and he blasts past both the Eastbourne Eagles and into the lead. The crowd roars as Tom Perry leads the way. Eastbourne still packing second and third. Jack Smith, the young reserve at the back. But meantime, the rider in yellow has gone down. Richard Andrews falls for the second race in a row. Now, can he get going again? He's trying to. Yes, he has. So, Jack Smith could get a gift point here if he keeps going. And Birmingham will get a 4-2. So, Tom Perry heads the way. Down into turns three and four. Checkered flag is at the ready then. Tom Perry takes the win. Second in white will go to Brad Wilson Dean. And Jack Smith, and he slowed up on the last bend. Jack Smith comes through for third place. Jack Smith's looking for uh, where the rider in yellow is. He can't believe it. He thought he'd finish fourth. So Tom Perry takes the win in heat 11 in memory of Victor Walters. And Birmingham gets a gift 4-2 with a fall for Richard Andrews and extend their lead by another couple of points with four races to go. Second win of the night for Tom Perry, Birmingham 34, Eastbourne 31. So Birmingham starting to edge away then. We go into heat number 12, sponsored by Mark and Greg Rhodes. Sam Chapman's off gate one in red. Gate two in yellow, it's Daniel Spiller. Tyler Govia, gate three in blue. And Mark Owen completes the lineup off the outside in white. Just waiting for Sam Chapman to pull four then. He's having a good night. Five and two bonuses so far. Tyler Govia on two points. Let's see what they can do here. Chapman, Spiller, Govia and Owen. This is going to be a close one, I think. Chapman's made the start, goes level with Mark Owen. Into the first turn, now Owen pulls around the outside. He takes up the lead. Chapman in second place, Daniel Spiller back in third. Now he attacks around the outside of the car park turn. He doesn't want to go too wide. He has gone too wide. Can he turn it back? Yes, he can. Good bit of riding there by uh, Daniel Spiller up into second place at the back in blue, Tyler Govia. Now... Can the Eastbourne pair hold it together? They've had their fair share of faults, these two tonight. Mark Owen and Daniel Spiller. And Eastbourne manager Glenn Martin and their travelling supporters from Sussex will be hoping that Spiller doesn't uh, live up to his name again here. There's Sam Chapman back in third place. Just couldn't quite match the speed there of Daniel Spiller. He needs to change his line, he needs to move out wider, Sam Chapman. He likes riding the inside line, but there's no grip there tonight. Well, Eastbourne are going to be back in the lead with a 5-1 here. This is going to throw a spanner in their hopes of taking the title early. Mark Owen wins it. Daniel Spiller second. Chapman third, Govia fourth. So Eastbourne get their third 5-1, I think, of the night. No, I apologise, only their second 5-1 of the night, sorry, in Heat 12, sponsored by Mark and Greg Rhodes. And that means the side back in front by a single point. Mark Owen heads around in celebration then. The skipper of the Eagles taking the win. He'll celebrate in front of the home straight fans. And it's Birmingham 35, Eastbourne 36. Eastbourne back in the lead then, going into Heat 13, sponsored by Sheila and Alan Roberts. This one could be a belter. Gate one in white is Brad Wilson-Dean. Gate two in red, it's Adam Ellis. Gate three in yellow, Kelsey Dugard takes the rider replacement for Georgie Wood. And Tom Perry from his favoured outside in blue. So three of the top riders in the National League. Brad Wilson-Dean, the New Zealander, not been his night, only four points so far. He'll be desperate to improve here. Saw how frustrating he was when he came down earlier on in Heat 5. Adam Ellis unbeaten, bar a fall in heat six. 
Tom Perry. Just one point dropped and the pass of the night. Last time out in Heat 11 around the outside of Brad Wilson-Dean and Richard Andrews in one move. Kelsey Dugard, a winner in Heat number two tonight, completes the lineup from gate three. I've got no idea what's going to happen here. Wilson Dean, Ellis, Dugard and Perry get underway. Brad Wilson Dean gets away well. Dugard gets some lift. Adam Ellis gets a shove from Brad Wilson Dean. Perry's locked up on the first turn. He's again got to do it the hard way. It's Wilson Dean who leads the way. Adam Ellis up there in second place. Now, Ellis will cut to the inside. Meantime, Tom Perry's made up one place. He's got round the outside of Kelsey Dugard up into third. Brad Wilson Dean is really riding that machine like a bucking bronco there as he comes out of turn two. Perry chasing them in third place, coming out of turn four. The leaders are together. Wilson Dean on the wider line. Adam Ellis needs to take a few risks here if he's going to pass the New Zealander. Out of turn two they come. Down the back straight, Perry trying to close in, but he's quite about half the length of a straight behind at the moment after a mistake on the first turn. Into lap four they go. Is Adam Ellis going to suffer a rare defeat here at Perry Bar? Brad Wilson-Dean out on the wider line. Is he finally going to take a race win? Ellis cuts it tight. Is he going to do it on the run to the line? No, he's not. Brad Wilson-Dean wins. Second for Adam Ellis, third in blue. It's Tom Perry and Kelsey Dugard at the back. So the heat is shared. Heat 13 sponsored by Sheila and Alan Roberts. Eastbourne still lead with two heats to go. And Brad Wilson-Dean at last gets his race win here at Perry Bar this evening. He heads around in celebration. It's Birmingham 38, Eastbourne 39. The tension really mounting here at Perry Bar now as we get ready for heat number 14, sponsored by the Birmingham Mail. Jack Smith's off gate one in blue. Gate two for Eastbourne in white is Ben Hopwood. Gate three in red, we have Zach Weichnecht going for four wins out of four. And that man, Dan Spiller, is off the outside in yellow. Nine and a bonus so far from six rides. This is going to be an interesting one. Birmingham one point behind with two races to go. They're not accustomed to this situation this year. Smith, Hopwood, Weichnecht and Spiller get underway. Zach Weichnecht gets away well, so does Jack Smith. He's made a great start. And Spiller slowing up on the outside. He's Made a real mess of that first turn. Birmingham are one and two as they go down the back straight. Ben Hopwood goes for the outside of Jack Smith, trying to take second place away, and he's done it. So Hopwood up into second place. Jack Smith, can he hold off Dan Spiller for third place? He needs to move out onto the wider line here, but he's holding third at the moment after Dan Spiller made a real meal of the first turn. There is Zach Veit next. He's heading for four wins out of four. Meantime, Jack Smith is still holding off the rider in yellow, Dan Spiller, for third place. But Spiller now moves ahead of him, coming out of turn two. So it's a three-all as it stands at the moment. Birmingham will be a point behind going into the final race. Good effort by uh, Jack Smith, but he's down to four. Just catch a glimpse of them there on turn one. Zach Weichnecht is coming in for victory then. He's unbeaten from his programme rise tonight. I'm sure he'll be in heat 15. Second in white goes to Ben Hopwood. Dan Spiller third. And Jack Smith has to be content with fourth after a good effort on the opening two laps. So one point in it then. We have a last heat decider following heat 14. Sponsored by the Birmingham Mail newspaper. And Zach Weichnecht, four wins out of four so far. He and Dan Spiller both heading round in celebration after that one. One heat to go, Birmingham 41, Eastbourne 42. Okay, here we go then with the last heat decider. Heat number 15, sponsored by Happy Donkey, Coffee Machines, Coffee Beans. And the lineup is as follows. Off gate one in red, unbeaten so far, Zach Weichnecht. Gate two in white, Bradley Wilson Dean. Gate three in blue, Adam Ellis. Gate four in yellow, Mark Owen. Birmingham need a heat advantage to take the win. That's what it comes down to. Anything else, Eastbourne win. We become only the second side to win at Perry Barring League competition this year. The riders settle across the gates then. A hush descends from the crowd here at Perry Bar on the home straights. 
Start Marshall calls them into line. Here we go. Weitnecht, Wilson Dean, Ellis, Owen. Let's get ready to rumble. Away they go. Zach Weitnecht's made the start. He's going to try and skittle the other riders wide. Here comes Adam Ellis around the outside. Here comes Wilson Dean. They both go past Zach Weitnecht. Ellis into the lead. Now Zach Weitnecht only needs to hold on to third. And the Brummies will win by a point with a 4-2 if Adam Ellis keeps going ahead of Brad Wilson Dean. So the focus now on Zach Weitnecht. Forget the maximum, Zach. He needs to hold off Marco in the third place, and he's doing so. So if Birmingham take the 4-2 here, they win by one point. Zach Weitnecht is the key man. He's holding that third place ahead of Marco, and Adam Ellis is away and gone at the front. Weitnecht closing up a little on Brad Wilson Dean. He doesn't need to threaten him. The 4-2 will be enough for Birmingham to win by one. Adam Ellis heads into the last lap then. Ah, oh, Birmingham and a snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. The track has dried out, as you can see. Brad Wilson needs gone straight on at turn two. Weitnecht is through into second place. He's going to complete the pain maximum after all. The win goes to Adam Ellis. Weitnecht comes home second. The Brummies have done it. Eastbourne trickle across the line. Wilson Dean third and Marco in fourth. Well, I bet some Birmingham fans weren't expecting that. I bet even Zach Weitnecht wasn't expecting that. Birmingham take the 5-1, and they don't just win by a point, they win by three. Well, Adam Ellis and Zach Weitnecht have won it for Birmingham. Zach Weitnecht completes the paid maximum. Brilliant scenes here at Perry Bar. The final score, Birmingham 46, Eastbourne 43. Well, what an extraordinary meeting that was, to say the least. We had absolutely everything in the first heat, in the first few heats. I must say, full credit to the track staff for their work after the earlier showers, being able to get the meeting on, and it's ended in a truly wonderful conclusion for the Birmingham Sure Stop Brummies. Let's give you the individual scorers. Then we'll start with the, the Brummies. Adam Ellis scored 11, Adam Kirby 1, Sam Chapman 6 and 2, Zach Weitnick 14 and 1, a paid maximum, Tom Perry 9 and 1, Jack Smith 3 and Tyler Govier 2. For the Eastbourne Eagles, Bradley Wilson Dean scored 8, Richard Andrews 5 and 1, Marco in 8 plus 1, Ben Hopwood 8 plus 1, rider replacement for Georgie Wood, Kelsey Dugard scored 4 and 1, and Daniel Spiller 10 plus 2 from 7 rides. That all adds up to the short stop Brummies 46, the IT First Eagles 43. So Birmingham go to Mildon Hall, Fen Tigers on Sunday. A win, they, a win there, and they are the National League champions for 2015. Next action here at Perry will be Wednesday, September the 16th, which is a Gold Cup fixture. Opponents to be confirmed. And then two weeks after that, it's the Joe Thurley Memorial. We'll have full coverage of both of those meetings for you. But until next time, this is commentator Dave Goddard signing off above a very happy crowd here at Perry Bar from all of us here at Clean Cut Sports. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.